Hey guys, I'm Brandon Cummings, a member of the EOStack community, and today we're going to do a little walkthrough and take a look at the first version of the EOStack member client. So in this video, you're going to learn how to become an official member of EOStack, what kind of membership perks you gain access to by doing so, and why registering is important for enabling the DAC to function. Alright, so when you pull up the member client for the first time, this little box will pop up asking you to authenticate yourself with Scatter. There's also an API endpoint you will connect to that will most likely be automatically set to the fastest responding node, and we'll get into how you can view and change that in the settings once you are logged in. But the first step you're going to need to <laughs> the first step you're going to need to take is authenticating yourself with Scatter. And if you're having trouble signing in, there's some troubleshooting steps you can follow down below. But if you've signed in before to use any of the DEX exchanges or play around with some of the EOS games that have been released so far, then you shouldn't have any problems logging into Scatter. Okay, so I am logged into my Scatter already, so I'm gonna click the sign in button at the bottom. Awesome. So now we've connected to an API endpoint. We've identified ourselves with Scatter. And now it's asking if we're ready to read and agree to the Constitution to become a registered member. So, if you have the time, I highly recommend you click this little button to pull up the full screen version. And just go through it and make sure you understand it. Reading legal documents may not be the most fun thing in the world, but you're going to want to know things like what the core principles of the DAC are, what your DAC tokens represent, what rights and benefits you have as a member. Okay, so once you've had a chance to read through this, go ahead and close it at the top. And once you've read through it yourself and understand it, you can check the I accept the constitution box, which will then enable the register button to be clicked. And once you hit that register button, it's going to create an on-chain transaction that uses this hash to identify the version of the constitution you've agreed to. So if you don't have the time to read through the constitution right away, you can also exit out of this screen without registering and still be able to easily pull it back up later and finish the registration. And you can see when I canceled it, my status remains as unregistered which means I'm not actually a member of the DAC quite yet. But I can easily pull it back up by clicking on my member status, sign the constitution, and then it'll bring me right back to the same screen we were just at. Now I'm going to address a question that I know some of you might have, which is, can I register without holding any EOS DAC tokens? So without holding any EOS DAC tokens, you can still read and agree to the constitution but you won't have member status and you will see pending as your displayed status up here until you deposit EO stack tokens into your wallet. So just to summarize that real quick, if your account you've authenticated with Scatter has any amount of EO stack tokens, whether it be one or a million, you can read and accept the terms of the constitution and gain registered member status. If you don't have EO stack tokens, you can still read and accept the constitution to get started and your status as a registered member will be activated once you've deposited EOStack tokens into your account. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, what does being a member actually allow me to do and why is it important? Well, that's a great question and one I'm happy to answer. I plan on going into more detail of the perks and benefits of being a member in episode two of Everything EOStack coming out this weekend. So for now, I will keep it brief and to the point. So being a registered member allows you to be eligible to submit worker proposals and get paid to bring value to EOStack and the EOS ecosystem. You can also vote for custodian board that jointly approve or deny work of proposals. You can also run as a candidate for the custodian board, potentially receive airdrops from projects that partner with EOSDAC. It also allows you to be eligible for a distribution of future profits if the community and custodians decide to do so. Awesome, so at this point, you should know the steps to authenticate yourself with Scatter. 
how you can view the Constitution and accept it to become either a registered member if you hold EOSTAC tokens, or a pending non-member that can be activated by transferring any amount of EOSTAC tokens to your account. We've also answered the question of what membership actually allows you to do. And the last thing I want to cover before we check out the rest of the member client is why it's important to make the community aware and encourage them to register. We need 20% of EOSTAC tokens voting in order for the DAC to fully launch with the new custodian board, who can then, alongside the community, start managing EOSTAC and protecting your rights and benefits as a member. So becoming a registered member is the first step towards voting in custodians and fully launching the DAC, which will be a feature added to the member client that I believe if everything goes smoothly, is projected to happen around the end of Q3 this year. Okay guys, let's finish up by looking at what else you can do with the current version of the member client. So right now I'm under the wallets tab, which looks very clean and simple to understand. And I can see my total EOS balance and how much of it is staked versus how much is liquid and tradable. My total EOS DAC tokens, which right now does not have staking capability, so all of that balance is liquid and transferable. And then the current real time value in US dollars. So right now it's going to be representative of your EOS and EOS DAC tokens. So the balance does not include the value of your other airdrop tokens. So don't freak out if you log in and view your wallet and don't see your Karma tokens and IQ tokens and other airdrops calculated in your USD balance. So right now it's just gonna be representative of your EOS and EOS DAC tokens. I can also see the current network resources my account has available. And with this wallet, you can also send EOS and EOS DAC tokens. So we can select the token to send, select how much we wanna send, input the destination account and the memo is going to be important if you're sending to an exchange but if you're not sending to an exchange this can just be used to log your transaction and then once we're ready we'll just hit transfer tokens and then we can behold the power of EOS with its half second block times so that's the current version of the member client wallet available and now let's say we actually did send a transaction and we want to view it. Well, right under the wallet tab, we have the token explorer, which we can use to take a look at the transaction. I did a walkthrough of the token explorer on the ESDAC YouTube channel, which I will link to you if you want to check it out in more detail. But for our viewers that have not seen this yet, I'll show off a few features. So we have some token metrics displayed at the top and the transaction we would have sent would show up over here under the transfers. So let's say this was the transfer we had just done. We could click on the transaction ID to view it in more detail, as well as the raw transaction data as well. Okay, let's go back to the home page and scrolling down to the bottom, we can also see the total number of daily transfers that have taken place, charted out under the EOSDAC token activity. All right, and the last thing I'll show you guys with the token explorer is the holders tab where you can see the accounts currently holding EOS stack tokens and you can even click the top 100 chart to see what that looks like in a pie chart okay so heading back over to the member client the last couple things here is the settings tab here you'll be able to change your API endpoint which I mentioned earlier would be automatically selected. And the way it works is the app calls every node of the top 21 BPs and the first responding node is selected. But if you want to change it, you could do so in here. And under the settings is also where you can view your membership status and either register or unregister as a member. You also have the option to change your language preference as well in the settings. And then right under the settings, we have the constitution for you to reference whenever you like. And I personally like the darker contrast here, 
but if you wanted to change that, you could also change the contrast at the top, that little button, whichever looks more comfortable to you. All right, guys. So this again is the first version of the EOStack member client. And in future updates, we'll also see tabs for creating a profile, voting for custodians, and submitting work proposals. And that concludes this tutorial. I hope you found the information presented here useful and hopefully motivating to pull up the links for yourself in the description and get started with the process of registration and stay up to date when it's time to vote for custodians. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and either myself or another community member will do our best to answer them. Thanks for tuning in, guys.